All right, welcome back to the channel. We've got some brap right here. So we'll do a little talk about this FD3S engine that we just put back together. This came in for a customer and uh, it was a pretty dirty pile of parts. And uh, we were able to not only restore the side plates, bring them back to life, clean up the porting, uh, change them from a not so pretty street port into a nice little half bridge, equalize all the runners, get everything, you know, somewhat uh, blueprinted out, and then fresh rotor housings and maintained the original rotating assembly. So, a uh, fairly inexpensive way if you've got a FD3S block or any rotary block um, would be to hope that you're able to reuse your side plates, your stationary gears, and your rotating assembly. Send it out for balancing, maybe side cut the rotors, clean things up, um, add a little bit of porting, maybe port match if it's a sloppy job from the past, and then new rotor housings. New rotor housings basically equate to a quality rebuild, quality block. Um, there are times where you can get away with low mileage rotor housings, but I think in most cases, if it's a high mileage motor, um, if it's been used, abused, overheated, then you should probably just expect to need new rotor housings as they are not only a vital structural part of the block, but they're also a vital running surface component of the block. You're not able to build good compression or have an expected long lifetime if your rotor housings aren't in good condition. So in this case, we were able to reuse the customer's rotors, rotating assembly, stationary gears, new bearings throughout, new rotor bearings, new main bearings, um, bumped up the oil pressure uh, via race regulator. Um, since it is a half bridge, it is going single turbo. This is more of a performance build going from, some, from something that was more basic, kind of a, a mild street port to a more aggressive half bridge single turbo setup. I think in that case, it's a good idea to clean up the bearings. So we went with all new OEM bearings. And then as far as all the rotor and seals go, all new OEM seals, side seals, springs, OEM corner seals, um, and then we went with uh, E and J. And in this case, it's a, it's a rarity these days, but these rotors had already been modified for three millimeter. So in order to save the rotors for the customer, we did uh, stay with the three millimeter apex seals. Um, and we went to an aftermarket version made by E and J, which uh, can lead to some benefits. It's not always a great thing to carry the extra weight of a three millimeter seal, but if that's what your rotors are set up for, and they were a 1993 to 95 rotor that had been modified in the past for a three millimeter seal, so probably a racing rotor from the past somewhere, um, seemed like quality work. So we were able to special order some three millimeter apex seals to match. And part of the reason that uh, I mentioned that the apex seals had to be special ordered is you don't want to end up just running a classic Mazda three millimeter seal. That's not going to provide any benefit uh, as far as, you know, structural integrity. Uh, you know, an old se older style seal could still break. And uh, the radius at which the apex seals leading edge is rounded at is, is in the modern sense, um, a different profile than the earlier seals. So using an aftermarket made performance seal by ENJ, three millimeter two piece, we got the benefits of the newer technology in regards to leading edge radius and newer material um, as far as what's available in, in, in regards to engine protection. So uh, not always my preference to go three millimeter, but in this case, it actually was quite a big benefit for the motor. Um, you've got a stronger seal, um, and it's still aftermarket, non-breakable, and basically protecting the engine from the inside out. And especially in this case where it's going to be a new car build, basically from the ground up, um, new rotor housings, uh, it's a great way to protect the investment in case something external does cause a problem. You're not going to damage your internal assembly, which we were able to maintain for this nice rebuilt KMR half bridge. So that's a wrap.
It's going to ship on out. It's already got some tape. I stopped it right before we dropped it onto the pallet. It's got to travel uh, halfway across the country to its uh, lucky new home. That's a brap because this thing's going to brap. Thank you so much for watching KMR.